We've arrived at two of the daughters of the Prophet his um, daughter Umm Kulthum and the, the elder of them, Ruqayya. And you know, both of them, all, you know, I think, you know, what's interesting about the family of the Prophet والسلام, is that everyone close to him accepted Islam as soon as the Prophet والسلام, declared his prophethood, which meant they knew him best. See, many of us, subhanAllah, it's very easy for people outside of our circle to acknowledge our worthiness or our righteousness or our religiousness or whatever. But the people closest to us, they know that we're not all we're cracked up to be. So when they ask Aisha, عنها, give us a, a summary of the character of the Prophet ﷺ. She said, what, his character was the Qur'an? He was a Qur'an walking upon the earth. Every time I read about the family of the Prophet ﷺ, I say, SubhanAllah, Allah Ta'ala sent Jibreel alayhi salam to him with wahi and his wife followed him. All of his children followed him. And I think, what did they know about him that I want my family to know about me? So Ruqayya became Muslim immediately after uh, the Prophet alayhi salam expressed his prophethood to her. She was betrothed and a betrothal, for those of you who don't no, it's when a person is married to someone even be, like even in infancy, like they're promised essentially to someone. She was promised to what Abu Lahab had two sons, Utbah and Utaybah. So she was she was betrothed to, to Utbah, who was the son of Abu Lahab. So if you think about this, one of the arch enemies of Islam, his son was engaged essentially to the daughter of the Prophet Muhammad Again, just, just emphasizing how integrated a part he was of the place that he lived. Many of us think that righteousness implies living within but not having anything to do with all of this sinful uh, stuff going on around us. Now, when Surah Al-Masad was revealed, Tabbat yada abi lahabin wa tab this essentially, it, the hands of Abu Lahab are, have perished, right? They are destroyed, right? And this was on account of his hatred, how much enmity he had toward the Prophet ﷺ. When that surah was revealed, he said to his son, if you don't divorce this woman, meaning Uruqiyya, he said to Utbah, I will never speak to you again in light. This just shows you, you know, some of us, we think that when you're a good person, you don't have any detractors. When you're a good person, everyone loves you because we're not reading the hadith correctly. The Prophet ﷺ said, when Allah loves someone, he says to the angels, I love this person, so you love this person. And the angels convey to the righteous on earth. We love this person, and Allah loves this person, so you love this person. There is no guarantee that the wicked will love you. Abu Lahab disliked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it wasn't the Prophet Sallallahu in his person that he disliked. It was the message of the Prophet Sallallahu what he stood for that he disliked. That he said to his son, if you don't divorce this woman, I will never speak to you again. And so he did, he divorced her. But guess what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave her someone much better than Utbah ibn Abi Lahab. She was married to Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu. Beautiful, modest, shy, wealthy, pious. So this story, you know, it's you know, indicative of the fact that sometimes when Allah ta'ala closes a door for you, it is only to open a better door. That might be, you know, then as now, being divorced, um, you know, is sometimes seen as um, uh, not, I wouldn't say a badge of shame, but it, 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 some, not, it certainly isn't a badge of honor. So, you know, this man divorced you and Allah gave her something better. She's also distinguished, uh, Ruqayya, as one of the people of two hijras, 
the first Hijrah, which was to Abyssinia. You know, a lot of people forget, I don't forget, because my son's name is Najashi, right? But a lot of people forget that the Muslim, the, the early fledgling Muslim community, searching for a place of refuge, searching for a place of security, searching for a place of safety, where they turned was Africa, right? They turned to Abyssinia and the, the Negus or the Najashi, Ashama ibn Abjar, he granted them the safety they sought. He granted them the refuge that they sought. And uh, Ruqayya was among the companions of that first uh, Hijrah. And of course, she ended up making uh, the second uh, Hijrah. She had uh, a son who passed away in uh, Medina. His name was Abdullah. Uh, this, of course, was very difficult. Then, maybe, and some people say maybe due to the, the sorrow or the sadness, or she ended up passing away shortly after that. Then we come to Umm Kulthum, another daughter of the Prophet ﷺ, and the Prophet immediately married her to Uthman, which for us culturally might seem like a cultural anathema, like, wait, he was married. Now, of course, you can't be married to two sisters at the same time, but seeing as though he was married to Ruqayya, and then she passed, and then afterward, he was then married to Umm Kulthum. The Prophet ﷺ said, if I had ten daughters, I would marry all of them to Uthman. Which says something about Sayyidina Uthman, you know, who he was. The Prophet ﷺ once said, on occasion, Sayyidina Uthman was approaching a gathering, and the Prophet ﷺ began kind of prepping himself and, you know, kind of, you know, fixing his, his, his clothing. And people were looking like, wait, wait. People do that when you're approaching. Like when you're approaching a gathering, Ya Rasulullah, alayhi salatu wasalam, we, you know, kind of, you know, make sure that we're, you know, looking our best, that we're in our best hay'ah, we say in Arabic. You do that for number anyone? You do that for Uthman? He said, the angels do that in the presence of Uthman. And many of our scholars say they did that on account of his Iffa. Right? His name is Uthman ibn Affan. He had great uh, temperance, he had great self-control, a man of great dignity. And so he earned the title Nurain, the, the possessor of the two lights, because he had the distinction of being married to two daughters of the Prophet alayhi salat wasalam. So, you know, uh, it illustrates in a very powerful way how the companions are connected Uthman is a companion of the Prophet ﷺ. He's also the son-in-law of the Prophet ﷺ. And because they were connected in that way, they knew each other deeply and intimately. I don't only know this person as just a person that I pray with. I know this person as my son-in-law. So when I speak to his virtue, when I speak to his character, I know what I'm talking about. I've seen him, you know, the Prophet ﷺ said, the best of you are those that are best to their families. Every time I read that, I think, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ actually knew how Ali was to his family, meaning his wife. He knew how Uthman was to his family, right? I mean, it's just deep connections, you know, deep connections.